Hi guys, um, I wanted to talk to you today about the difference between El Nino and La Nina. And I'll also do a little bit more explaining about the things that happened with El Nino and then what happens with La Nina as well. All right, so let's start off by taking a peek at an online globe. All right, so here we see North America, where we live. Charlotte would be about right there. Here is Mexico, and this comes down to Central America. And then here is South America. A lot of the things that happened to El Nino with El Nino happened on the western coast, right here and right here, of these two continents. But it all happens because of the trade winds. Now remember, there are winds that blow in the mid, I mean, not in the mid latitudes, but at the equator in the tropics, and they are blowing from ill east to west. And what they do because they blow from east to west is they blow warm water that would be on the surface of this Pacific Ocean. See how big the Pacific is? It's very big. When we go to the beach, we see the Atlantic Ocean, which is also large, but not as large as the Pacific. So over here, like right here is California, right? Okay, so now this right here in the equator, you have trade winds that blow. And when they blow, they make the warm water blow across the Pacific Ocean. And the surface water of the Pacific Ocean is very, very warm right over here most of the time. Right here where Asia is and right here, right like where um, Australia is, then the warm surface water gets blown over here. And so on normal years that are not El Nino years, then that means that the ocean water over in the Pacific right here is usually quite cold because the trade winds take the warm water and blow the warm water from the surface over to Asia on the other side of the planet. But now on an El Nino year, the trade winds die down. They don't blow as hard. They actually you might even stop blowing. And in some weird occasions, they might blow in the opposite direction. Instead of going, ew, they might go wee west to east. But mostly it's just dying down. And when that happens, then that means that the warm water that's usually over here in Asia starts to travel back around the globe in the Pacific, right? And it comes and the warm water moves and moves and moves and moves and comes over here to the west coast of South America and to the west coast of the United States and Mexico. That warm water makes lots of low pressure systems. Remember stormy, cloudy, rainy, low. Remember that warm water makes more evaporation, more condensation, more precipitation. All right, and so the people who first began to notice El Nino lived here in this part of South America, and they were mostly Catholic, and a lot of them were fishermen. Now, another side effect of El Nino is the warm water makes the fish either die or it makes them go to colder waters. And so the fishermen would, one, notice that there weren't any fish to catch, and they would also notice it would rain a whole lot right here, on the western coast of South America and a lot on the western coast of North America. And because it happened at Christmas time, they started to call it El Nino after baby Jesus, the Christ child. All right, so El Nino is when the Pacific Ocean gets warm. All right, so that's the very first thing I want you to put in your notes is one, trade winds die down. right? Which makes the Pacific Ocean get warmer. Near South and North America. West Coast. So the West Coast of both of those get warmer. Right? That means that both of those also get more rain. In South and North America. On the West Coast. All 
Now, let's click in on that a little bit. Now, one other thing to know about the about El Nino is this, and I'm not even sure why, but when all of this warming happens, it makes the Gulf Stream, which is normally right up here and you know floating up here, it makes the Gulf Stream like come down lower across the whole southern United States. So the whole southern United States gets rainier, but also, you know, when the jet stream comes down low, it makes us cold. So the southeastern United States and the southern United States get colder and rainier. So let's add that to our notes. Southern USA equals colder and rainier. And what's weird, though, is that because of that, the place that normally would be really rainy, like, you know, up here is where Washington State is, like where Seattle, where the Seahawks play, because um, the rain, because of the way the jet stream dips down, it makes it much warmer and also it makes it drier there. So, like, let's do Northwest USA, where Washington State is. They get warmer and drier. All right, and for the moment we're we'll stop because I don't want to make this too long to upload to YouTube, and I'll do one more video to explain the next part.